Okay, well, in the previous lessons, we talked about what do we do when we have forces that are on a flat surface. And uh, just to kind of refresh your memory, we had an object on a flat surface. We had a normal force, which was equal to the weight, F sub G. And we may or may not have had forces in the X direction. Um, Today we're going to talk about how you do a force diagram when your object is not on a flat surface, but rather it's on an incline. So let's draw an incline. And we're going to say that this incline is angled at some angle theta. And I'm going to take my box and I'm going to put it on the incline. So now you might be thinking, wow, that's crazy. We can't do that, but we can. All right. So let's talk about what forces exist. We know that this incline is on Earth, and we know that because it's on Earth, gravity still works. So I know that I have to have a force of gravity. So where do I put that arrow? Well, the force of gravity always goes to the center of the Earth. It doesn't matter if you're on an incline or not, or if you're on water, or if you're in air. Your arrow will always point down to the center of the Earth. All right. Now, in the flat surface example, we had the normal force. And let me just zoom in here. Oop. We had the normal force going straight up, opposite gravity. And so you might think to yourself, well, the normal force goes opposite gravity here again. But that is not the case on an incline. The normal force always is perpendicular to whatever surface your object is on. Okay, so now we've got the normal force here, we've got gravity right here, and let's assume that because this is on Earth again and there are two surfaces touching, friction exists. And we know that an object is going to, when it's on an incline, move downhill, most likely. So friction always opposes the motion, so my friction force will go backward up the incline. And we'll say that this box is sliding so that it's kinetic friction. If it was standing still, it would, be, it would be static friction, which would mean that that would be an S instead of a K. But really, it doesn't make much of a difference. OK, well, now you're saying, wait a minute. We've got three arrows going in wildly different directions. They're not on the xy axis unless you count FG. And so what we need to do is we need to do something radical here. And this is. Uh, something that can confuse people from time to time, but this is what we do. Right now, we have an x-axis through that object which runs horizontally. And we can say that we have a y-axis that runs vertically through the weight vector. But again, that doesn't do us much good. We, we have two vectors that do not belong there. And we have some angles that we're not sure about, so here's what we do. Here's my current x-axis, here's my current y-axis. I'm going to grab that x-axis and I'm going to pull it down so that it now goes right along the incline. And I'm going to call that axis x prime. Well, when I shift the x-axis, the y-axis can't help but tilt so that it's now perpendicular with the incline. So here's my y axis. And you're probably saying, that's witchcraft, but it's not. OK, so how much did I shift that axis by? Well, I shifted it by the angle theta. So when the y axis was right here, it then shifted over theta degrees. OK. Well, let's redraw this picture because it's starting to get a little bit cluttered. So I'm going to move this up. And let me redraw my incline with my new axes. And here's my box. Here's my weight still going in the same direction. Shifting the axis does not shift the weight. Here's my normal force now in the y axis or in the y direction. And my friction force, which is now in the x direction. Okay, Remember, this is x, this is y. 
All right. Well, I still, that helped me with two forces, but now I still have one force that is not in the correct direction. So what do I need to do? I need to do what I've done in other situations where I don't have a vector that's right on that axis. I'm going to dot my y-axis down here, and I'm going to find the y component of the weight now. So I've got this vector right here. That's going to be the y component of my weight, or f, g, comma, y. And I also need to know what the x portion of this is. This is my x-axis. So I've got an x component here, which is going to be f, g, comma, x. All right, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see that. Well, I have to do that backwards every time. So I've got f, g, x right here, f, g, y right there. Now, the other thing I need to know if I want to resolve a vector into components is I need to know an angle. And remember from above, when I shifted my axis over, this angle theta now resides right here between my weight and the y-axis. So here's theta right here. Okay, this is a complete um, drawing of my forces on an incline. Now, what do FGY and FGX equal? Well, I'm going to take my FGX vector here, and I'm going to slide it down. Okay, now I have a right triangle. And let me pull this triangle out. Here I've got FGY. Here I've got F. G, X, and here I've got F, G, with my angle right here. Okay, now I can figure out, this is just a regular old right triangle, so I can use my trig functions to solve for F, G, Y, and F, G, X. Okay, so um, F, G, comma, Y is going to be equal to my hypotenuse, Fg, times the cosine of theta. Let's go out of the camera here. Here we go. And you might be saying, wait a minute, cosine doesn't go with y, but now it does because we shifted our axis and the angle moved to a different place. And so notice that g is the adjacent vector to that angle, and cosine is the trig function that goes with the adjacent side. And likewise, fg comma x is going to be fg, and this should be a subscript here, sine theta. So these are my two equations for the components of the weight. And you might be saying, well, why do I need to know that? Well, let's proceed to the next thing we want to do, and that is do our force equations. I have the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, what forces do I have in the x direction now? I've got the force of gravity in the x direction and friction. And I'm going to choose the downward side of the incline to be positive, so I'm going to say fg comma x minus fk because it's going in the opposite direction. Now, I don't know if this box is accelerating. It's probably, it might be going at a co constant speed. I don't know that these forces cancel each other out. So using Newton's second law, I can just say in general that the sum of those two forces equals ma, and I'm going to say max. So now I can figure out the acceleration in the x direction. Now in the y direction, we have the normal force, and we have the y component of weight. And because again they are in opposite directions and f, uh, the normal force is more up than the, the y component, I'm going to subtract the y component 
And now I do know what the acceleration is. That box is not popping off the surface, it's not sinking into the surface, so there is no acceleration in the y direction. So I could say m-a-y, but y is zero, and so therefore the whole thing equals zero. So this is the sum of the forces in the y direction. And that's where we'll stop.